Okay, my friends. Here we got a beauty. Some of you don't agree, but this is a limited edition Craftsman Tecumseh 6.75 horsepower mulcher. It was uh, just through word of mouth that the gentleman came here. He's a pastor. He's new in town. He's been here about a year. And uh, somebody sold him this. The, the gentleman who sold it to him, he said, I'm a mechanic. And that huge loud sound is just the mulching blade that you're hearing going around. So I've tried to back it up and emulate the, how it sounds. And we're going to do an RPM check just to get an idea. I'm shy because it can yank your arm off. Okay, there it is. it was revving before I actually took the pressure off the throttle arm. 4,050. That's a lot for an old Tecumseh. So I'll show you what happened. So right here is your throttle and it's still stiff, right? But it was stuck out to here, wide open, right? And the guy who sold it to this nice man said he was a mechanic and that's just that roaring is just a, a mulcher blade going around and around he told him so it doesn't stay running it misses it was wide open throttle that's probably wide open and then it settles down to somewhere in the whoops, somewhere in the middle like that but uh, let's just start it up again to see if we can play with it a little bit that primer bulb doesn't feel really consistently good either. So at least now it goes around and around at about 3200, 3250, something like that. So now we can start to at least work on this crazy thing. And you know how much he paid? He paid $200 for this lawnmower. Yes, it's a self propel and it's in good condition. The wheels aren't worn out. But still, $200 for a lawnmower that, that you can't keep running for more than 15 seconds without playing with it is a lot. I felt really bad for the poor man. They're out there, aren't they? Let's get it up on the lift. It's big, eh? It's a 22 inch drive. Okay. Did you, uh, there, now we're up to speed. Coming over here. And we're gonna set this right somewhere perfect. So I'm really thinking it needs a carb wash. I might do it in the ultrasonic, I'm not sure. This muff is gonna go hotter than the pistol. But this throttle shaft needs some rest. Yeah, that's really stiff. I'm gonna squirt it. might be a large part of our problem, right?
There we go. I wonder if I should try and start it now. I'm going to just take a little lift on that lever. See if that settles things down a little bit. I still think it needs card from the Big, big mower, right? Oh, oh yeah, it's got that. Oh, right there. Oh yeah, that's gotta have, that's gotta be a, that has to be a sheared, partially sheared flywheel key. Let's work on that first. I, I don't want to hurt my arm. Get it down a little bit, this is a tall guy. Let's have a look, see if we can find out if the flywheel key is sheared. These are, these are hot already, eh? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Woo. Quarter inch there. Do I take this right off? No, I think I can lay this here. Just carefully. Only two of those, eh? Now, there's going to be two quarter inch holding that down. Back to the quarter inch. Should almost be using a separate driver for the quarter inch. And there'll be a 5 8 or 5 16 holding the, holding the uh, dipstick in, too, right? This is the nice part. About Tecumseh's rewinds, you guys, they just pull off. You don't have to take the whole shroud like a bridge and strap. The pond is the same as this. And then, we have the dipstick. When you call somebody a dipstick, it's actually a compliment. They're very important. Here we go. find out momentarily if the flywheel key is partially sheared. Okay, let's get the light out. Where's the lights on? It's laying there, it's just on. There we go. Pulled away and torqued. I think that's it. I, I, I'm just so suspicious of these old Tecumseys that come in. So I gotta loosen the uh, coil. That. I'm going to put a little bit of, I think this will be it for the day. I'm going to put a little bit of acetone and transmission fluid, which is my new loose and all, 50 50 mix or so. I'm going to mix it up. So I'll show you the Master Jet and I hope it comes off. Alright. I'm going to get a uh, three jaw puller. 
which works on these, it should. We got a three blade yank on it now. I'll just tighten it up by hand, it's the best way to do it. We're going to throw a little heat on that subject. Good. Okay. I'm going to get some gas. Actually, I'm going to use a socket. There you go. Okay, I'm going to turn that off. Now this has worked for me in the past. I'm going to get some soapy water, because I don't have a water squirter, it's just soapy water. I'm going to squirt the main crankshaft coming out of there. Gets the temperature, gets them two different temperatures. Now we're going to see if we can pop that off there. Well, it's been, if you look at this, it's been, it's been, uh, let's get a little more light. Sometimes the focusing light's light. There we go. See, it's been beat up a little bit. Not a lot. But there is a line. See right there? Right there. Boink! So now I'm going to put a new one on. And that will be it for me today. You know what? This gentleman deserves a brand new one. All of these old ones do have marks. Yeah, yeah. So I'm just going to lay that in there. Tap it in with a hammer. Perfect. I'm going to put it back on. has been the going rate for these. I should know it off the top of my head, but I don't. Let's go 55 foot-pounds. I'll just hold the blade. Couldn't do it on the last one because it was a Honda and I couldn't hold the blade on a Honda. 50 foot-pounds is a fairly good yank. 55... 52 foot-pounds. Put your hand underneath a lot more. you got to get the plug wire off. Okay, let's see if we can get a click. Come on, baby. Okay, now do I put this back together? Although everything is pretty stable. I'm going to stop now. We'll attack this another day. Alright, we're just going to... It's the, next, it's the next day, by the way. And the oil I put on the uh, throttle cable seems to have really taken effect. So unless the carburetor is really dirty, which it could be, uh, We'll get there when we get there. But the interesting thing about this is these are supposed to have a J19 or an RJ19LM 
or uh, BPR 2LM NGK. This in here, and that's going to work, but he put in a BPMR7A for a spark plug. So it's the wrong one. And the guy said he was a mechanic. So now I am just putting in the uh, gap for the the gap and tightening up the coil. Quarter inch tightener up around there. Just spin that out. We'll take the weight off the brake because I want to just check with the spark plug being out. Oh, it's on this mold. Good. Well, I'm going to use his spark plug just to see what kind of a spark plug we got. All right. So now we've got the coil set. I'll just, I'm not going to check for spark. We know it has a spark. So, coil screwed down, new flywheel key. I think we can afford to put the uh, cover back on, but this might be a really good time to see what kind of gas we have, right? And it's not necessarily the gas, it's the uh, pieces and parts and grass and stuff that you picked up in the tank since it was new. So I'm just I'm just gonna pour the tank into here if I can. I'll probably end up taking the tank off anyway, right? Not that much stuff. Always surprises me. Right? That's pretty good. There's a few twigs and stuff in the bottom, but they're, most tanks have a screen in the bottom. Or a filter or something like that. Hey, you know what we're going to do? We're going to just take the bowl off. It, it'll either be a 7 16 or a half inch. So we will spill a little fuel. I might even put a new seal on the on the carburetor for the primer bolt. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the very good thing that we uh, decided to have a look in there, eh? Hard to believe it's still running, actually. So, do I clean the carburetor? Probably a good time to do it now that I can get the tank off too. Yeah, I should clean the carburetor. Yeah. So before I spun the I spun the engine and I forgot that the uh, the, the dipstick wasn't secured down and it went blurp. So we got a new plug in there now. I'm going to tighten up a couple of things. I'm going to get, I think of my buddy Wayne every time I do this now. If you got the hood off, yeah, on a Tecumseh, you might as well, right? He says the, the bolts around the exhaust are always a little looser than the ones around the intake, and he's absolutely right. These three here. So, do we get this carburetor off of here? I think we should. It's probably pretty gooey, eh? So 7 sixteenths on a rattle gun. Take the muffler off. I don't think there's very many hours on this machine yet. And then we use this one with the Phillips. It's an American Phillips, not a GIS.
I don't want to wreck the intake manifold gas today. Tecumseh's, this is, there's a couple of things that people hate about Tecumseh's. Okay, number one is that you could almost change the flywheel key on every one. And that will improve how they start and perform. And the other thing is guys don't like the, uh, a minute, I'll do this right. People don't like the linkages for the for the uh, throttle. So the top one is the one with the hook in it, and it goes to the closest hole on the carburetor right there. And the bottom one is the one with the spring, and it provides you that return that you need on the governor. So this one is a half of a hook, and this one is a bit of a a bit of a Z bend, eh? So this one has a bit of a Z-bend, and that's the one the guys hate right there. And then the throttle goes, it's sitting like this, and it goes to the, ho the hole that's closest, whoops, goes the closest to the shaft. Not on this, not on the outside, because there's a huge hole there, but it, the, the hole closest to the shaft, right there. And if you look really close, there'll always be a, sl a little bit of a wear mark in there, making it a slightly larger hole. FYI. Here we are. So we got a we got an icky poo poo bowl. No seal on the bolt, if you can believe that, unless it fell off. Nope. Oh, there it is. It did fall off. The needle. And then we'll just take off the brass, the brass jet. And, and the float. And it needs a clean. But it's not that bad. The O-ring inside the carburetor looks pretty good. These two welch plugs are rusty, so I'll clean that up. And uh, have we got our quarter inch driver on there somewhere? Not yet, eh? I don't know if this will fit in here or not, but these are quarter of an inch. Yes, they are. Okay, let's take these off. This, put this in the ultrasonic cleaner or if I should just do a little bit of uh, magic with a, with a carb spray. Now on this one, this is all, this is, okay, this is Tecumseh 101 right here guys. You gotta, you know, it, this is it. I need that little screwdriver that I was poking away at something. Here we are. Right here there's a little plastic plug. Get a smaller screwdriver, and you can pry it, pry it out. And underneath it is a a jet called the idle jet, and it needs to be cleaned as well. You guys, miss this. Pay attention, folks. Now this cover is almost ornamental because you can't adjust this particular. 
Let's take the O-ring off. Oh, it looks pretty good. You know what? We might use these because the original ones you, you are so much better quality than anything else you'll get. Ooh, yeah, it's gourd. You know, I might just put it through the ultrasonic. Ooh, we can do, we can take it apart, right? What do you think, Mick? You're doing. I noticed you're doing more Tecumsehs these days with all of the uh, cylinder mowers that are coming in. Look at that throttle now. It was frozen open. Okay, so three eighths and seven sixteenths. So we're going to get a little, uh, change this, we're going to get a 3 8 inch socket and a 7 16 wrench. What? 3 8 Yeah, that should do it. Remember that this is on the outside. This is the spring return for the throttle. Good. And usually this gasket survives right there. We don't touch it. So we'll put that over there. That floats okay. We might. I think I'm going to ultrasonic this guy. But it's so good, I think the fuel line's probably still all right. Oh, except the cable clamp is broken. Look at that. Fuel line flyer. I need a nurse. Don't take that the wrong way. This is one of my complaints on Tecumseh's is that this 90 degree elbow does flex. Oh, there. I'm going to leave this on, we'll take that off, and boy you know there's nothing left, eh? <laughs> Wire brush, not a brass brush. Tiny bit of gas on there, this is old fuel. It's going to be fine. I think I'm going to wash it means heating up some fluid and a lot of stuff. So I'll be back in a bit. All right. So my I put the parts that we're not going to need right away over here. Broken clamp. Don't need that. There's our bolt. Cup. I mean. Okay. So I'm just going to give this a little squirt. Yeah, some of these little red things don't hold on very well. I'm leaving the emulsion tube in. I'll just pour some gas over this to dilute the, the uh, carb spray. And that's ready to go in the basket. Kind of at an angle if you can. Now, small stuff. All right, here's the ultrasonic cleaner. It's just warmed up to 57, but if I use my gun, oh, it says 51.9, so we need to wait a few more minutes. So while we're waiting for the ultrasonic cleaner to warm up, I'll just have a look at the belt here for the front drive. Not bad. Of course, the belt got. Can you, can you guys believe that? For a 18 year old machine or older, I'm just going to take this back out to the uh, apron and blow that blow that fluff out of there. All right, my friends. I'm just rinsing everything with methyl hydrate. All it does, it, it it's just it works just like rinsing with water except it uh, displaces any of the water and the methyl hydrate evaporates or mixes with the water and if, it's, if there's any left it'll evaporate. Right? 
So the recession in the bowl in the bowl goes to where the hinges for the bowl float. One, two, three. Okay, I think I'm gonna turn the mower around. Just wipe up a little bit of oil here. That fell out from the dipstick. Oh, I guess it goes over. Memory's not that good. Thanks for the memory. We're in. Okay, let's rattle these in carefully. I'm not mucking with the seal because a little tiny paper came off this side. Now, loosen them a little. Just a little, not a whole bunch. And just seat it in there, kind of. Now, I got a big old Phillips that I use just about the only thing I use this for. They are 3 8 All right, rewind. I think we're getting close. Good, quarter inch. I know I got a quarter incher out there somewhere. Where's the quarter inch? Oh yes, I put it on the end of my small tool. Okay, I'm going to get a quarter inch wrench and make sure this one's tight over here because the gas tank's in the way. Oh, that's... There we go. Good. What's missing, guys? Air filter. And some fuel. And a muffler. A full tank of oil. And we got the pretty little cover. Where did that go? Good. Oh, completed. All right. Before I, I uh, let you go, uh, my buddy Brian is, is here. And all I got left to do is add some gas, connect the spark plug, and change the oil after I'm done. Talk to you in a bit. News alert, you guys. So this one runs good. I set it to 3,100 RPMs. But when you pull back the rope, even with the new flywheel key in there, it still wants to jerk the, co the cord out of your hand. I checked. The uh, coil is not upside down, I don't think, because there's a, even a groove for the wire to come here off the top, eh? Okay, new coil in here. even going past the strength of the rewind I'm gonna have to yank this motor off and check the uh, cam gear it's almost like like this thing is in such fantastic shape it's almost like it was sold and never used really like I mean look at the uh, rubber on the tires right like even the little lines between here Have I got, I don't think I have a Tecumseh cam gear, but I'm really curious. I kind of followed the piston with the screwdriver up and down as the coil, you know, and, and observing the coil. And if it's out, it's not out enough to see or feel. But holy smokes, when it pulls back, it's just like the old Tecumseh that breaks your wrist. And I want to help this poor gent. He paid 200 bucks for this thing because it looked like it was in good condition and the guy lied to him. So, we'll continue. We will endeavor to persevere. <laughs> That's from the uh, movie with Dustin Hoffman. Uh, Little Big Man. Talk to you later. 
So this is the plug on that. It's still hot. I didn't run it long enough, but if you look really close, it's burning white on the end of there. I'm not used to a flathead burning, burning lean. Thanks. I'll do a demo for you very, very carefully. But when you look at this thing, there are literally, there isn't a mark on it. So something weird is going on. I'll pull it till we get past TDC. Okay, there we are at TDC. So you won't even hardly go past TDC. There we go. So even, even uh, with the clean carburetor on the uh, ultrasonic cleaner, it's still laboring, eh? So I'm just going to yank the plug now and see if we can see any white dust on it. There we go. There's a great, great demonstration right there. Look at that. Look at the tip of that plug. It's already gray. The companies don't do that. Thank you, guys. Hello, my friends. I've got a power smart mower here that's not so smart. But anyway, I'm going to just take the uh, valve cover off of this guy. Because I want to show you something. Okay, this is the exhaust valve right here. Now we're going to get right in there. And we're going to zoom in on her. Okay, so the engine's turning over. There is the exhaust valve getting rid of the gases. It closes. And now there's the intake sucking in the gas. It closes. Alright. And now we're at top bed center. And we should be compressing the fuel. Oh, did you see that? Right there. There's a little bump in the exhaust valve before the compression stroke is finished and that little decompression I'll do it again it just lets off a little bit of pressure while the pistons coming up so it's not so hard to pull and on this lawnmower the whoa the uh, exhaust valve I looked at it I took this little door off and the exhaust valve is not opening to release the compression. But the decompression valve is not ac activating because we have a bad cam gear. And if it is, I suspect that this lawnmower has been like this since the day it was sold. Because this is a front wheel drive and just look at that. Look at those tires. 19 year old lawnmower self propel in absolutely pristine condition. So I think I'm going to take this engine off. I'm putting the plug back in so I don't drop stuff into the engine. So I've changed the flywheel key and the coil hoping that that would solve the problem. And usually with the Tecumseh the flywheel key will be the culprit. So anyway let's just uh, get a BSS small engine Tool and get that cable disconnected for the uh, throttle. Brandon? Alright guys, we're going to take this apart. I've been really jallying around here long enough. before on these older Tecumseh's. Three quarter inch. Let's do this the real way. Just 
Drain in the oil. Get rid of this. Okay, we're just draining the oil now, and I'm going to take off. We're going to undress. We're going to undress this old Tecumseh here. You know what drives me crazy about this thing is everything on this on this crazy thing is is uh, like brand new. <laughs> so let's just do a little tilt of magic here. And then we'll get most of the oil out of it. No, it should do. Okay. Let's tilt her back. Well, that's perfect. Hardly spilt a drop. Okay, we should have a bolt back there. We can stick back in the hole for the engine. It's right here. It's a really dumb thing because the width of the bolt is touching up against the frame. Okay, that's going to work. Let's get that blade off of there. Got to do the Tetris dance around the shop. Now these should be 916. Oh, they're halves. Let's use a proper proper one for that. That's a pretty small Allen key, man. There we go. Hardly any pressure on that at all. I wonder if just loosening the motor will do that for me. It's pretty heavy. These old ones sometimes snap off, eh? Okay, now this is the one where we have to be careful. Can you guys still see? Don't laugh now if things go awry. And a half inch hoo dumber holding this together. Easy peasy. So there it is, upside down on the bench. I'm going to take the bottom sump off. They're all three eighths. I'm going to need the Allen key to put it back together again. I don't know if it's going to happen today though. Do you think sandpaper will do? Oh yeah. Yes! Do we use this 3 8 with the larger shaft or do we use this narrower, taller 3 8 Let's go. Water, the oil is out of it, right? I'm going to leave that one in. I think I'm going to polish this up a little bit more. I mean, this engine is 20 years old and it's not even 
I get stuff seized up bad or... Let's just get a brush. Get a brush. Okay, one more. Now I don't want to wreck the gasket, right? This is the big reveal. We're off, we're loose. Woodruff key removed. I want to see if we've survived on the gasket here. Hey, Ralphie boy! Alright, my friends, I got the sump off. Nothing special happens. It's happening right now. The uh, timing marks are lining up. So something still as weird is going on, right? Oh, the head gasket did not survive. Not a big deal. We have to find out what's going on here. So now we're going to put this back on its feet. What I did this was to just get most of the oil out of here. That's not bad. Now we're going to support this with this piece of wood somehow. Baby! Okay. Top dead center. Okay, exhaust. Intake. Compression. No, absolutely no kick on that exhaust valve. There it is there. I'm just checking one of the, in, the exhaust valve here, or the exhaust tappet. It should just open it a, a little tiny bit, but it looks... like it's not doing it enough, eh? Magnifying glass. Okay, my friends, this is the cam gear from that uh, Tecumseh mower. Uh, this tiny little, I'll, I'll show it to you up close later, this tiny little post is about 30 thousandths away from here. You see right there? And when the engine starts up, the centrifugal force forces this out and removes the decompression valve release after it started but there it's on so I'm going to zoom in on that and I'm going to show you what I have found okay so if you look right here this has been flattened down a little bit right there there's a notch And I don't know if I can hammer that flat or, but that's, that's what's happened is it's been worn off. You can see it pulls away there and then comes back after. It's very precise, but it's not pushing enough on the exhaust valve. So I'm just going to look up a couple numbers before I attack this thing. <laughs> Thanks. Cool, eh?